finally, finally, <laughs> I'm able to get uh, good visuals today. Okay, great. All right, well, uh, I'm going to talk in this video uh, about what I do. So this is Sincere of Sincere's channel, of course. Um, so um, I wanted to talk a little bit about what is my profession and what am I doing at this time. Okay, so in a later video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of what I've done over the last uh, number of years. And so, but I'm going to start about recent years. Uh, in fact, uh, the last seven, almost eight years. Okay, now, um, by profession, I am an English as a second language teacher uh, or English as a foreign language teacher. So I say EFL or ESL teacher. On my certificate, I'm basically an English as a foreign language teacher. I'm certified to teach internationally. And um, and um, so in my area of study, when I was a university student, my master's degree is in English uh, literature or just English. And uh, my minor is in art, which is painting and drawing. Uh, my master's degree is in English education. So I am an education major. And uh, so um, I started out uh, as a young teacher uh, when I was a young teacher teaching social studies and English to sixth graders here in the United States. Um, but uh, it's difficult teaching in the United States. Uh, teachers don't get a lot of respect and they didn't when I was young and they certainly don't get much respect now. So, you know, uh, that profession has really been chipped away at and you know, really just sort of attacked and, and it's not the only one. Uh, it's happen it's happening now in medicine and, you know, just across the board. But anyway, so, um, so I'll talk about later about my experiences teaching abroad because after I stopped being a teacher here in the United States, uh, later, sometime later, I started uh, teaching abroad. But I'm going to talk about what I've been doing in the last few years. So I'm an online EFL teacher, uh, and uh, I am what you would call here in the United States an independent contractor. So uh, I uh, teach for some corporations uh, using uh, using their um uh, platforms, but um, but I'm considered an independent contractor, and the tax code has me as a as a business owner, <laughs> small business owner. Now, how did I become a small business owner <laughs> teaching? No, it you know, but this is the way the tax code works here. So I am an independent contractor, but my profession is English teaching, and I used to teach social studies as well. Uh, I come from a liberal arts background, not liberal as we think of now politically, but liberal arts used to come things like uh, languages, linguistics, philosophy, just a lot of fields was, uh, you know, uh, uh, covered um, the liberal arts. Uh, this was back in the day when people did not specialize and you had more people that were more intellectual, smarter, not just focused in on one or two things. And so that was the good old days, but that's just about gone now. But anyway, so let me, I'm deviating and talking about a lot of things. So let me talk about um, how I I got into teaching online. Now, I got into teaching online back around 2017, I believe, was when I first started. Uh, I had come back from Turkey um, in, two, I think, late 2016, early 2017, actually. So, I had come back from Turkey in 2016. I had been teaching in the uh, Anatolian city of Eskisha here uh, on the uh, Asian side of Turkey. And um and and had a, you know had a good experience and I will talk later about my experiences teaching abroad and particularly in Turkey. Um, so I came back and um, I you know I I didn't want to go back into working or having anything to do with the public schools here in the United States because it's just it was terrible when I was teaching and and even worse now. So yeah, I just couldn't take it. Not at my age. I don't recommend anybody takes it. You <laughs> get out when you can. Get out while you can. <laughs> but anyway. But um so um so um I was wondering what can I do? You know, I, I want to continue to teach people that are non native speakers, but I'm here in my country. How do I do this? And stuff. So my my father actually uh you know gave me you know like the being light bulb <laughs> gave me the idea of um you know teaching online uh because I didn't want to go back uh, abroad. I didn't feel comfortable doing it, not because there was a problem abroad, but my parents had gotten old. They were 
were both in their 80s and it was, it was like uh, or late 70s at that time like 78 79 and i'm like i i don't think it's a good idea because i don't think my father is going to continue to be able to drive around he was already where he had to use a walker um he was still trying to run his business back then but he ended up the health problems and his age caught up with him and so not long afterwards he ended up we had to shut his business down for him um so um uh, but he was the one that gave me this idea to uh, teach online. So um, I did some research. Uh, I ran across an article. I think it was a part of the British Council website about this, this young woman had written about how she was teaching online and, you know, teaching people in other countries. She was teaching people in Iran online. I was like, wow, I would love to do something like this. Wow, if only I could teach more people in the Middle East, you know, and everything. Because, you know, I'd had good experiences, uh, you know, in Turkey. And I thought, okay, what? Well, if I could teach other parts of the Middle East. So uh, it was a while before this happened, though. Um, so um, so after, you know, I did my research and I looked around and uh, I did find some online jobs and I uh, actually applied to some and then I sort of forgot about it. And um, not long afterwards, I got an email from a company Topica Native, and um, they said, we would like to interview you. You know, we saw it, Rick, saw your res your CV, uh, my curriculum vitae. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, particularly here in the United States, um, what we call a resume here is actually a curriculum, is a curriculum vitae. Well, resume is a little shorter version of curriculum vitae or CV. So they had saw my CV and they, you know, wanted to interview me. And I said, sure. And so they said, we'll interview you on Skype. Uh, so, um, so, um, you know, we set up a day and I was interviewed by a young Vietnamese woman. Uh, the company was called Topica Ed Group or Topica Native. Um, so she, you know, liked me, you know, she was, I guess, impressed in the interview. Uh, and so she asked me, you know, would you, you know, consider, would you like to go through training? We'll train you. It'll take about one month to train you. Um, you will do little quizzes and exams. And then you have to do like a final exam. And uh, if you do well with that, we will hire you. I said, okay, sure. So I went through about a month of training. And uh, and then at the end, I had to take the exam. You know, uh, I spoke to her a few times. And, you know, they you know, would give me links about where to go and to study up on using uh, the uh, form, you know, the formatting, uh, teaching me how how they wanted me to teach because how they had their lessons. They had pre-prepared lessons and the teacher would teach that. But we had to teach them a certain way. They wanted us to teach everything a certain way. So I had to be trained on how to teach it a certain way, you know, about the technology and everything so um so at the end um i had to take an exam to see how i did after a month of training uh and so um uh i uh, took the exam i passed but uh i passed um I ended up where, you know, like uh, the base salary. They didn't want me on the base salary. They told me, teacher, we want you to retake, retake the exam because we don't want you there. We want you because you have a, a master's degree. We want you to start at least around $14 an hour. I said, okay, great. You know, so I retook the exam and I was able to bring my score up. And um, yeah, so I started out and I didn't know what to expect so much because um, I was wondering, they told me you will be teaching six students at a time. I'm like, how will they be in a, does Topica have like a classroom and I teach them that way? Or how, how does it work? You know, so I didn't know how it worked until, you know, the first day that I, you know, uh, started teaching. You know, I'd log in and then the technicians would take me over to the virtual classroom. So the virtual classroom would have anywhere up to six students. And it turned out that uh, most of my students were adults and they were in different cities around Vietnam. So some of them were in Hanoi, some were in Ho Chi Minh City, others were in other places. Um, and um, some of my students, it was so funny. It was so great uh, in Vietnam. They would, um, sometimes you would hear chickens crowing in the background. It's so great. I just loved it. And they were really nice. I just loved their voices. Everybody sounded like little children. They were so cute speaking. And, you know, I couldn't see them, but their voices were so cute. Now, my students could actually see me, but I couldn't see them. They were all in different locations. Now, maybe now with Topica, they might have it where the teacher 
can see the students. But at that time, the, me being a teacher lecturer, I could not see my students. They could see me, however. So this, the early uh, software that they were using was not very good. Uh, there was a lot of static uh students would you know <laughs> we would come we would come we would come disconnected and the tech would have to take us back students would become disconnected from the platform the tech would have to try to work on things and bring them back and they would do the same thing with me because you know like i said this this was the early years this was like 2017 the early years of ed tech you know it was just getting started and um and, and so yeah there were a lot of glitches and everything the bad sound poor sound quality everything um, most of my students were adults. Um, I had a few, uh, had some students call from Laos. Uh, I think maybe one time a person from Cambodia. Um, yeah. So um, I taught uh, basically Viet Vietnamese people for um, for uh, for around seven months. I really loved it. And then I was so disappointed when they said, "Teacher, we want to move you over to teaching Thai people." So they had opened up a market in Thailand. Uh, because, like I said, Topica is a Vietnamese company. And so they um, moved me over to Thailand. Then they brought in people from Indonesia as well. Um, I liked it. I missed my Vietnamese students because the Thai and the uh, and the um, Indonesian people didn't have these cute sounding <laughs> childlike voices. Everybody sounded like little kids, the men and the women. It was so cute. And um, so... Um, so I taught uh, Thai people uh, for uh, basically the rest of the time I was with Topica. I was with them for five years. Um, the Cambodian market didn't grow, so I stopped having Cambodian students because it would usually only be maybe one or two, and they would have to put them in the same classroom with the people in Thailand. So, um, but I taught people, I taught everywhere from retirees to housewives to accountants, engineers, doctors. Uh, there was a film producer, um, uh, teenagers, older teenagers, university students, Buddhist monks. <laughs> yeah, I taught it. In fact, one of my Facebook friends is, uh, is one of my uh, students in Thailand. He's a Buddhist monk. And uh, he messaged me last week. He sent me uh, a clip. Uh, he is a Buddhist monk and he runs a hospice for people with cancer. So uh, he sent me a clip of a guy whose father has cancer. And this guy was from Kuwait. He sent it to me, I guess, because on my Facebook page, I often talk about my Arab students, which I just uh, so I just love them to death. I don't I have a new Arab regular student now, but I'll talk about this later with my current job. But I just love my Arab students to death and stuff. It's great. And um, uh, so he, he uh, this guy. Uh, actually was um, his father is suffering from cancer so he wants to come to that hospice and I asked him I told him uh, is this he didn't say anything he just sent me the clip and I asked him I say is he by any chance as that guy is he is he Arab I say he has an Arabic accent and he said um, he said he said yes he said he his father is uh, uh, from Kuwait he's from Kuwait and um, so yeah but anyway let's get back on topic because uh, I tend to deviate so um, I was with Topica for um, almost five years, well, five years. Then when COVID came along, the, the, uh, the students just dropped off. It was like, I would, I would log in and I would literally be the only student or the only teacher, uh, in the, um, the main room. They call it the main room for the teachers. Before it would be just filled with teachers, a lot of them with like Eastern European names. And so there were a lot of Eastern Europeans, I think, on the platform. I was like one, probably the lone American. I think one student said, you're the first American that has, has taught me on here. <laughs> and so, so yeah, um, so, um, um, so after, so I, so when the market collapsed in Thailand, because Thailand had the lockdowns and everything just sort of collapsed. And I, and sometimes I would log in and I would be on schedule. They would do my schedule for me and then, and give me the schedule and then, but nobody was coming. So I'm like, I'm going to have to do something. <laughs> I'm going to have to find other work. So I started hunt hunting for more online work. And um, I ended up being hired by uh, EF, which is in, uh, Education First. Uh, and so I was interviewed. I sent my CV out. They interviewed me. Uh, and so I had to, um, I didn't have to train as long as with Topica. Uh, I had about a week to train. I think it was a week, a week to train. So I had to read a lot of materials and everything, and I was able to do it. And then I had to take an exam, and I was able to pass the exam. So, um, so for EF, I started teaching children in uh, China. 
Uh, my students were ages 5 to 11. Um, and um, I liked it somewhat, but I didn't like the job. One of the reasons uh, uh, was I had to get up around 4.30 in the morning. The earliest that teachers would have to teach on the platform was 3 a.m. in the morning. 3 a.m. I would get up at 4.30. I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> I can't get up at 3 a.m. The reason why is because uh, I live in North America. I live on the east coast of the United States. And the time difference between here and China is 12 hours. Okay. 13 hours, I think, when they do like they change the time over here. So um, I, I taught some kids. Some of them were really cute kids. Some of them were very smart. And then I had about three or four that didn't want to learn. And it was like pulling teeth. It was terrible. <laughs> um, so I was with EF for three months. Um, I had actually during that time when I had applied for other jobs, uh, because I saw that things were going south for Topica. Uh, I actually uh, had applied to several other places. And so one of them was Cambly. Cambly Incorporated. Cambly was another ed tech group. It was American. Whereas um, Topica was Vietnamese. EF, I think, is Swiss. Uh, um, Cambly is an American company. It's based in San Francisco. So, um, so um, I had forgotten that I actually had uh, set up a profile no, I hadn't completed the profile. What I had done, I had sent in my CV to Cambly. But Cambly, unlike the others, did not contact me. Okay, they didn't send me an email. Oh, we want to do an interview or nothing. They just, you know, CV, you know, see your CV. So when I, I, what I did, because I, I wasn't enjoying it so much with EF, I decided, okay, I'm going to go back to Cambly and, you know, you know, set up, you know, do what I need to do. Um, I had forgotten because, you know, it had been months before that I had actually put out my CV. So I, I went to the website, went to the tutor account. And it said that I had, been, my, I had been approved to teach on Cambly. No email. Maybe they had sent an email and it went to my junk mail. I don't know. But all this time I was able to teach on Cambly. So what I did, uh, I, and I didn't know. I was, you know, had been, you know, yeah, you can teach here. So uh, on the platform. So um, I got on Cambly. Uh, I set up my profile, my video, everything. And uh, I started teaching on Cambly. This was almost three years ago. Um, so, um, so I was working for both. I had let, uh, Topica go. I, um, Topica had actually offered because their market crashed in Thailand. They had offered for me to go back, uh, to, um, teaching people in Vietnam. I was tempted because I really liked teaching them, but I had worked for camp, uh, for Topica native for five years and the same material they would make some alterations each year but it was basically you know they would do like they would rotate they would have a whole year wor years worth of lessons and then they would bring it back around the next year with some added lessons uh, actually over that five year period their technology improved significantly uh, there was not all this crashing and glitches it got really good the sound quality was great and everything but still I couldn't see my students so it was different with EF I actually could see I was teaching one-on-one -on -one and I could actually see uh, the children in China um, so um, so Cambly basically similar set up, set up to EF one-on-one -on -one teaching uh, uh, and there were two Cambly's there was regular Cambly and then Cambly kids I was like I don't want to teach for Cambly kids now they have they have it offered still on my profile that I can apply and I, you know, I probably will qualify to teach for Cambly kids, but I don't want to teach. I, I, my niche is adults. Okay. I work with adults and young adults, you know, high, older high school students. So, um, so I was hired. So Cambly hadn't said anything or either my, the email got lost in my junk mail. So I set up everything, my profile, everything. And I started teaching and I just, I've loved it ever since. Um, the majority of the students on Cambly, particularly during this time of day in the United States on the East Coast, the majority of them tend to be in the Middle East uh, and Brazil. OK, uh, if I look at my profile from last year, you know, they give us every year. They let the teachers know about how many hours they taught, how many students, all of this. Um, the bulk of my students came from Saudi Arabia, Turkey and Brazil. There are many Turkish people on Cambly. Okay. They make up a huge percentage. Um, just today, I just, you know, I'm in between classes right now. 
um, my, uh, I had one, I had a student in Saudi Arabia. She's a teenager. And I just had another, uh, random student, uh, in, uh, in Turkey. So, um, yeah, and I have an upcoming student, if she comes, <laughs> she's also in Turkey. So most of my students are in Turkey. Uh, also, the next percentage would be uh, in Japan. So um, I have students in Japan, and then I have a lot of random students. I've had random students from Russia, Egypt, Czech Republic, uh, Angola. The only one in Sub-Saharan, I had a teenager in Angola. I was like, oh, please, 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 please become a regular student. Yeah, I had one student in Sub-Saharan Africa and Angola. But most of the students are, are in uh, Middle East, East Asia, China. I have some Chinese students. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's been a great, it's such a great experience um, these past um, seven years since I've come back teaching online. I was doing uh, teaching, working from home before it became a fashionable term, work from home, okay? And, um, and um, oh, I want to mention how they paid me. Now, camp, uh, not camp, I'll start with Topica Native. Uh, Topica uh, would wire my money to me. So they would wire it to my bank. And so my bank would take, <laughs> for the international transfer, they would take out a big chunk <laughs> of money. Um, now, with EF, they would mail me a traditional check, paper check through the mail. Um, I was only with them three months. If I had went past three months, uh, they would have just started doing it through um, uh, sending the money via my bank account. Um, and then Cambly, they pay me via PayPal. Okay. Um, a lot of expat Americans teach on Cambly. Okay, where my current job is Cambly. Um, I, in fact, I had a student tell me, <laughs> for even with Cambly, you're the only American that's living in America <laughs> that's teaching me. Everybody else is living in places like Central America, like Costa Rica, Panama, some living in Turkey, others living in parts of Europe. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> Mexico. So, uh, yeah, that, that's the case with my job. But, uh, yeah. But um, I'm going to end here. But, um, you know, I want you to know a little bit about me, what I do professionally. Um, I also, uh, I uh, wrote a book. I did an earlier video about a book I wrote. And I hope that in 2023, my I would like to this year move my other book that's on Lulu to my um, to Amazon. I have two other books in the works poetry and a novel. Uh, I hope I can get back to this. Um, it, it, you know, it's great when you have multiple interests. Um, you know, I feel sorry for people, which is, you know, they, they, in the last years, the education model in the last few decades was make everybody specialize. But I think it makes people dumber. <laughs> it does. I'm sorry to say it. But um, I, I'm the old schooler. I'm from the old school of the liberal arts. So being interested in many different things, many different topics. I mean, I love everything. I, I've gotten interested in architecture, actually, in the last few years. I'm very fascinated by architecture. Um particularly ancient arch architecture, not modern. The only modern architecture I like is maybe the architecture in uh, Doha, Qatar. <laughs> and I'm not a, a skyscraper lover, but I like the arch I like their concept of the um, the skyscraper. But if I want to go to the uh, roots of the skyscraper, that would be in Yemen, uh, the city I think of Hydramut. They have these old um, uh, skyscrapers uh, from back 400 years ago. So I love stuff like that. I love ancient architecture. The architecture that's different, that, that's aesthetically beautiful. I don't like modern architecture that's, you know, that's the box, you know, that's, you know, I don't like that. But yeah, and I just had a stu the student just called me previously. She's Turkish and she's an architect. She's, I'm an architect. So yeah, the bulk of my students that I teach on Cambly, um, the majority of them are architects. They are Turkish architects. And then I teach, not, I mean, not architects. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They are engineers. The bulk of my students are engineers. Uh, but I do get architects. I get doctors. Um, I get teachers, professors. Uh, university students. So yeah, it's great. And I, I love Cambly. Now Cambly actually pays me less than the other, my other two employers, uh, Topical Native and EF, but it's wonderful because I, my dream was to teach more people in the Middle East. So I teach, you know, Arab people. There are a lot of Saudi people. Um, you know, I, I just like, you know, I know a lot about their cultures. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I love Turkey. I've lived in Turkey. Uh, I know a lot about Turkey. Um, I started learning about Turkey before I even went 
went to Turkey. Okay. Um, because when I first went to Turkey in 2003, uh, I had to write a paper and uh, I needed to do the research. And my professor uh, told me, uh, uh, you know, told us that, you know, there was a there's a series of book called Culture Shock. So I started reading Culture Shock Turkey. So there's a whole series of book called Culture Shock and it teaches you a lot about really the culture on the ground really on the ground. So this book was really, really helpful. I started learning my first, some of my earliest Turkish words with that book. So it's great. So yeah, um, but anyway, I'm going to end here. I'm rambling again. I went 25 minutes. <laughs> I don't like to do long videos over here because I'm a newbie on YouTube and, um, you know, the guys on YouTube and the girls on YouTube that have many followers, you know, they can do hours and hours. You know, I follow people on Twitter. I'm subscribed to channels, but they've been around a while, you know, and they, you know, they're running videos three and four hours, but you know, they have built up their fan base and they can do all that. But see, me I can't do it because I'm just you know a novice at this but maybe one day who knows but I'm just enjoying it right now I'm not trying to I'm not trying to look at the numbers and all that you know and everything but I don't want to bore my audience but anyway but I'm going to end here um so you see my face this time um I, I prefer to be off camera I prefer to be the woman behind the camera not in follow in front of the camera so I'm doing in front of the camera now but yeah um but um but yeah I, I want to let you know a little bit about me what I do. I am passionate about education. I love it. I love the arts. I love anything old, history, architecture. I love studying about uh, philosophy and uh, 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 philosophy and Christian philosophy, patristics, uh, Eastern Christianity, Islam. I just love it. So the world for me is a smorgasbord. It's a it's a banquet. So I just I just love it. It's great. But anyway, I'm going to end here. So thank you for watching my video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. So this is Sincere. Until next time.